And I want to put it just a little bit in context, because the question that we usually get from people is, so why can't you get this on the internet or read a book about it or something like that? And the fact is that you can't. You just have a totally different experience from actually being there. And some of the things that you experience are things what I call data cascades. You know, when you're on the internet or in a uh, phone conversation even, you, you sort of don't have the picture of everything coming at you with the feel, the experience, the seeing, the people being there, the opportunity to go and say, so I just learned about this. Here's my question about it. And then you get this kind of data cascade going on where you learn more and then you have more questions and then you have the chance to ask those questions and learn more and see it and feel it and touch it. And that to me is what really is the key thing that happens there. So the result of that is that you get a different sense about what the possibilities are. And you get a sense not only of possibilities, but of priorities and interconnections. Because a lot of these things are linked together. You don't just do urban design and you don't just do transportation, you do them together. And one of the things that you really get when you experience the integrated system of a city is how those things actually fit together and how you can pull them together and bring them into uh, a common set of, of uh, priorities and senses of what you want to do. So that linkages uh, to me and that tangible feel are the really critical things that I've gotten as a result of this. Uh, and when I think about some of the specifics, you know, I mean, I can, can name probably, um, in fact, I just wrote down quickly about a dozen things that I learned about that I thought were really informed some of the work that we've done. The design of the waterfronts, the way in which you could create a, um, a community with buildings of the type of height that we have in most of our neighborhoods in that 50, 60, 70 foot range. Uh, the way in which courtyards can operate for housing complexes, a really fascinating tour that we took in, in a couple of places where those existed. All of the bicycle and pedestrian facilities, the bikeways, the integration of that with the pedestrian facilities. Um, the feeling of safety that uh, I think Luis mentioned that is so important that you get from having a large number of bicyclists. And uh, it's one of the reasons why I usually bicycle home at 6 o'clock because that's when we get a mass of bicycles going on the route that I go and we actually outnumber the cars and that feels good and that actually works really well. Um, I actually had one interesting experience also. Um, I took an extra weekend when I was there and bicycled out in the countryside. And to see the numbered routes for bicyclists and the way in which you could get easily from one city to another on a route that really did not have any traffic on it was a very interesting experience and something that um, I think we have some opportunities to do here. The waste systems and uh, the waste to energy work that's being done there is something that in Seattle has been kind of suppressed for a long period of time because we had very unfortunate experiences in the 1980s. I think the experience of this has helped to awaken interest in, in people of what can modern technology do with waste to energy and what are the opportunities there. Uh, and some of the intangibles like the relationship of the university in Malmo to the community and the way in which there's an interface there that really seemed to work extremely well uh, were very important. But I think that one of the things that, and this is um, something I've been thinking about recently, one of the things that really came across to me as very important from this and was very inspiring was the sense that it is possible to have the will to make major changes. And this, uh, um, I have to say, this sort of a philosophical thought about the way our society is going is that sometimes we feel like America used to be much more of a can-do kind of society that we'll, we'll figure out what needs to be done and we'll do it. And in recent years, sometimes it's felt, and, and you know, sometimes we talk of this as, as processing things to death, which I think is part of it, but the sense that we aren't ready to take some of those leaps into the future that I think America has actually been historically famous for being able to do. And it's really interesting to see societies that have been established for such a long time, much longer than many of our societies, being willing to take some of those major innovations, like designing a whole new energy strategy for Denmark, and saying, we're going to go from total dependence to actually being an exporter, in some ways, of energy, and being able to accomplish that over a 20 to 30 year period, having that sustained will and that commitment, that was very inspiring to me. And I think that's one of the things that you learn when you do go out and understand what other people are doing. So those are some of the things that um, I picked up from this particular trip, and I thought it was great, and it's great to have so many people here.